Hello everyone, I'm Anistel and welcome to the Timbo Born tutorial. We will be working with a power today, beaver power. It is not a horsepower, it's a beaver power. This is the update 6 experimental version, so it is not right now in like a main branch of the game, but you can play it, everyone can. And the same principles will apply to update 5. So what is the previous version of the Timberborn? So that doesn't really matter. The new things that are here in update 6 are these upward shafts. We want to power our industry. So when you are playing for Folktale, you have a couple of options. You can use the water wheel, these power wheels that needs to be powered by the beaver. Or you can be using this small windmill or the large windmill. Large windmill is of course more efficient, they will, it will produce more power, but it is more expensive. And then, especially important for the folktales, you want to save some power, because you are always dependent on the wind and on the water, and that's not like a engine for the iron tea, that it's constantly burning logs to get you power. The wind will stop blowing and you will lose all your power, so how to deal with that? So first, let's build the little demonstration industrial district here okay so i built a little industrial district it is not connected to power right now so let me show you how i usually do this stuff the wind with the windmills for the folk tales as far as i know it doesn't matter if you build them down here on the same level as the buildings or up higher they will always produce the same amount of power but anyways i always like to put them somewhere a little bit far away maybe up because it looks nice so let's place a few of them down here you need to connect them with power shafts every one of these windmills needs to be connected under the power and straight power shaft it doesn't need to be really straight you can connect them with these angled ones like that but they need to be connected you can even go up and down like this let me show you we can do something like this to go up like when you want to build a road underneath it so we can go like this you will build platforms you will put the road underneath it and then you can place your power shafts on top of that platform see and i will just have this angled here or turn shaft and then we need to connect this bottom ones when you are connecting to a any building that can be powered it will show that blue cog gear there let me show you with this one it looks yeah you can see it more clearly you see that that means that it can be connected to the building if it is not showing then it will not connect you see and like this it will be all connected okay all the windmills are connected but as you can see they are currently not producing any power because there is no wind so they will not produce anything and our industry will not work but anyways it would not work because it is not connected when you are placing these buildings that require power just like these lumber mills you can place them next to each other you can see even that they will change color the other building that you are placing it next to that means that they are connected and the power can go through through them so you just need to connect it from one side and all the buildings will be powered so that's why i'm building the industry something like this so the buildings are connected this is one block and this is another block that's connected together so you can just ah you see windmills are now working and you can check how much power this specifically one is producing it's this upper number and the bottom one is the complete network supply and demand and the wind went out again it is very unreliable <laughs> so let's connect our industry okay our industry is connected to our power at least part of it only this block is connected and this one is disconnected but this is kind of ugly i never like building power shots like this if i can avoid it so what i like to do is just to dig a ditch or just plainly set hide them in the ground and now that we have these vertical power shafts it should be possible to just power them from bottom up so let's try that let me dig a ditch here like too deep so let's dig a ditch like this 
Okay, let's try building our power lines or power shaft under the ground. So we will need this upward power shaft that needs to go down here like this. On top of it we will have vertical one and this downward. And you see it is turning, it's connected. So let's just build it like this. And we will try if we can power the buildings from bottom up. So what I'm going to do... Let's have a couple of more connections, just in case. Like this. So I build those power shafts like this. And how to cover this power shaft? You just build a platforms on top of it. Just like this. Or with the update 6, you can do even something like this. Let's delete these. Place only one lower platform and then use one of the overhangs. This is too short. Let's try this one. You see? And it is covered. And now you can place road on top of it or you can place housing or anything else. Just like on the other platforms. Let's proceed with these. It's covered with the platforms and now and we should be able to power our buildings from bottom to top so let's place some industry buildings on top of it like some melters you see it's completely covered you can't even see it you see the power input is 200 so it is working they are gathering their scrap metal yep perfect that's working and you can't even tell that you have some Power, power shafts underneath it. You can always lower the levels here by this button and see what's going on underground. I really was doing it the power shafts most of the time like this when I can do it. You don't always have a, a room for it. I like to just in my industrial district let me show you here on this empty space. I, I like to do something like this. This will be like our roads. So these are our roads and I can place power shafts. I'm not really going to do it so it works, but you can do something like this. You don't even need to go that deep. It's just enough to go one deep, but it depends on you what you want to do. You can go as deep as you want. So I was laying the power shafts something like this and then on top I was building the platforms because I never liked the power shafts to be showing on above the ground. I know that I have it in my playthroughs, but I couldn't do it uh, the other way, probably. And then on top of it, you just build the roads and power shaft is hidden. And then before when we had these vertical power shafts, I just dig on the one side and build this high power shaft. This is from the update 5 that we were using to go something like this. You always need to build a platform and connecting it like this, just like the stairs when you wanted to go up. But now in update 6 with those vertical power shafts, that's a game changer. So let me say let me say that I want like to have two gear workshops here. I want these two, but I need to connect them to the power. So I can easily do this without even building it underneath them. I can do this. I will need to delete this one, this power shaft, and swap it for either this T intersection or this power shaft intersection. It doesn't matter. We just need a new connection to be available here. And now, upward power shaft. It needs to be green. That means that it is connected to other power shaft. If it is yellow, then it is not connected to anything. And the power connection is blocked. It's even showing it down here. Okay, and then we go up. Then we go up. And then we go with this angled one. And it should, it should be powered. But it is not right now because we don't have this connected to anything. So let's change that. You see? And the power input is 120. It is connected now. Or we don't even need to do 
this the last piece we just wanted to the added like a lumber mill next to it you see and again it is connected and the power shaft is hidden that's the way I like to do it. It's a little bit more expensive way to do it because you need to have uh, explosives and a lot of planks and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more expensive. The other way that I'm doing it is when I have no other option or don't have resources for blasting, for making these, you know, tunnels, ditches or whatever to call them, you can use platforms. Like... Let's say that I don't have this power here, but on the other side, somewhere from here. Let's have these here. So I need to connect them here from this side, but I need to have this road here. The fun one thing that we can do is just get rid of part of the roads and build the stairs. Build the stairs and a platform in the middle and don't forget the road. And now we can build our power shaft underneath it. You can do this. You don't want to go on the ground, you want to go higher. Then just build one higher, or even two, or even three higher, doesn't matter. And then you can build on top of these platforms. And this is a little bit too higher, one less. Let's do it with one less. You can put down this platform and you can build on top of it, just like this. And you have your power shaft above the ground. Or now with the update 6, Let's delete this. We can use the overhangs. That will look even better. So we will use one lower platform and then the longest overhang that we can and just place it on top of it. Something like this. This is six uh, wide or long. It depends from which angle you are looking. So for a six, let me check. That's one, two, three, four four five six okay i don't need to build a platform we can can go from this ledge here and we can we have this uh, all the empty space beneath it that is not blocked by the platforms this is even more expensive because it requires metal blocks but if you can spare the resources they can this can look really nice and then we can connect this power shaft Go the, all the way here and I build it one higher, but that doesn't matter. We have these upward power shafts. We can use one of those and then connect it to our power grid. You see? And this district is, uh, I mean district, these buildings are powered now. Unfortunately, you can't power them from top to bottom. But at least we can do from bottom up. This works pretty well, as you can see here. That's really nice. That wasn't uh, possible to do before. So we can now do even these windmills that these power shafts will not be visible. Let me do that he up here on this hill. So we need a pattern like this, I think. Let me try it out first. We have it like this and we will have one our one central like power shaft that it will be connecting everything together. Perfect. So, like this. And now, to get that power out, this, for instance, and let the power shaft out. And now, for the windmills. Okay, and as you can see, they are all working, and together they are producing this amount, 1600 beaver power, but you can't see really any power shafts on top. So we can just freely build some roads around them without any issues or even you can play some decorations i think beneath them yeah that's fine maybe we can fit even some houses yep we can do that and the power shafts are nicely hidden underground so when you lower the levels you can see how this works they are all nicely hidden down there and covered with the platforms Again, a little bit more expensive, but very nice if you can afford it. And now, but what to do when we are out of wind? How, or we are in a drought, so our power wheels are not working. We can always use, under the power, the gravity battery. We can store power in these. And as it, as it says in its description, stores energy surplus and gives it back when its network is underpowered. The higher it is built, the more energy it can store. 
So let me show that. Let's build it on these small platforms, double platforms, and triple platforms. Let me show you. So the first one on the smallest platform can hold 6000 beaver power per hour. One level higher, it's 8000. One level higher, it's 10000. But the next thing you can do is to dig a ditch beneath them. So let's use these triple dynamites that will deepen it by three. And now this one holds 12,000, this 14,000 and this 16,000. But that is not your limit. You can go as high as the game lets you. This is 15 high. Let's build those power batteries up here. Oh, I mean gravity batteries up here. Now each one of them holds 34,000 beaver power. And still you can dig deeper and make it even better. I made that ditch six deep, so now we are holding 46,000 beaver power in one of those batteries. It's expensive to build them, but they can save you. Save you or just make you your industry to be running all the time, not dependent really on if the wind is blowing or not. You just need to connect this power shaft to the batteries. That's all. Lying here. Let's have two batteries just like here and connect them to the power shaft and now when they are drained you see that they are slowly regaining the charge from all these windmills that are producing power and then when you connect some industry through it to it or something else it will be using these batteries if all this power is not enough or if the wind is not blowing and the batteries are a little bit expensive but very very useful and the next thing is, if you are playing as an Iron Tid, not the Folk Tales, because Iron Tid have different buildings a little bit, but they have something similar to the Badwater Dome that you can build on these Badwater sources, and when you open them, even throughout the drought, they will keep producing the bad water, and you can use that for powering your industry all the time. But Iron Tid, they have an engines that you can feed with the logs. And they will go constantly as long as you have enough logs to feed it. But for folktales, you will be mostly just depending on the large windmills, then water wheels and batteries. Like for water wheels, you have only one real option here. That's this water wheel. They work exactly the same as any other power making structure. You build them, they are connected to each other like this. And you just need to connect a shaft. And then you will connect industry or any other building that you need to power. You can even build these power wheels like here. If you use this waterfall, like when there is no drought, like now it's ending. You can build them here. Or you can even build them on top of the platforms for the easier access. Or you can, you know, change this canal a little bit. To be more useful for you with dynamites and other stuff landscaping but let's say let's build a couple of platforms here i built the downstream a triple floodgate to increase the water level a little bit but i think i built those water wheels a little higher but we can work around it let's add another floodgate somewhere here maybe oh this is overflowing on the other side but you see now they are working but we can't really access them because I blocked the path. So let's just get rid of this piece of land here. You can do that. Or maybe you can just delete one of the water wheels and build a platform there. And we can connect this again to the power shaft. And maybe connect this one only to a battery that we can use later. And then connect this to our main grid. You can even build your power shafts under the water just like the roads there is no penalty for it it will perfectly work without any issues so you can build the power shafts underwater you can build your industry on top of the water to save some space and power it from the bottom up like we've done before so we covered this everything with the platforms and let's build some lumber mills on top of it but now this power shaft is not connected to anything. So let me connect it to that battery up there. It will not be nice, but it will work. So we need to go up from here. Okay, and to a battery you need to either connect it from the back or from the side. 
don't build underneath it otherwise you will block it like now it has 6000 beaver beaver powered saved but if I build something beneath it like these grindstones you see it dropped to 4000 so don't build anything underneath your batteries now the battery is connected to our new lumber mills we just need to connect them to the district and they should be working perfectly fine right now it is not moving because we are not delivering any power from the gravity battery okay beavers are coming to work and you can see the power shaft is already turning we are using the power that is stored in our battery and this is not working because the water levels are low so let's try adjusting that if this helps increasing the level on this floodgates but maybe I just build them too high we can always block this back here to hold a little bit more water and increase this floodgates now they are turning and you can see the battery is being recharged so we are producing more power than we are using power shafts are not really that complicated and you can do anything you want with them really the imag imagination is really your limit and then the world limit how high you can go but otherwise that you can build anything you want and i like this style that you can hide all these power shafts underneath okay so that will be all for the power i think for now and for the iron teeth it works exactly the same they just have engines and bigger water wheels otherwise it's the same so thank you for watching hope you learned something you enjoyed this video if you have any suggestions or any other comments please write them down below and i will see you in the next one have a nice day bye bye